and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. And today we have another episode of Makeup Mondays and this video in particular has been a long time coming. We finally have our mascara roundup or mascara ranking. So I have 12 mascaras here that I have been testing for weeks now. And again, I have used other mascaras. These just happen to be the 12 that I currently have. I don't usually keep so many mascaras open. So what we're going to do is we are going to compare these mascaras and we're going to do this in a few different ways. So we are going to do a price comparison. I'm going to break down each of these mascaras by how much product you get. So how many grams you get per dollars and everything is going to be in US dollars. We are also going to go over my personal preferences and my thoughts and experiences using each of these mascaras. So I'll give you, you know, any details, like if I experienced any smudging or flaking with them. And then I also have some superlatives. And the reason I want to do some superlatives is because I have a particular preference for my lashes, as I'm sure each of you do. And that preference is going to differ. So instead of just telling you what I like best, I want to tell you what is best about each of the mascaras so that you can figure out what might work best for you with your particular prefer preferences. Now, just for some background about my preferences, for me, the most important factor in a mascara is defined lashes. I really like separated defined lashes. I detest clumps. Some of the more volumizing mascaras that can look very clumpy and spidery, I don't like those. Those are not for me, but I definitely see that they have a time and a place for them as well. Now, another thing that I, I do appreciate is lengthening. Now, my lashes are a little bit on the longer side, but I still appreciate a little extra length when they are staying separated and defined. Third on my list is volumizing. I do appreciate a good volumizing mascara, especially for a night out on the town, which, you know, hasn't happened in a long time now, but I do appreciate them. But for me, that's what I use when I'm going out and I'm getting dressed up, trying to be a little fancier. But for normal every day, I really go with something that's a little bit more of a natural look on my lashes. So my preferences may not be the same as everyone else's. Now, some other things that are important to me in a mascara, I like something that is easy to remove, but I want it to stay put all day. I cannot stand it when, as the day is moving on, you start to get a little flaking from the mascara, or it smudges, or you know, you just, you don't really notice it anymore. So I really don't like mascaras. I, I want them to stay the way they look when I first apply them. So we've got a variety of different things here. Now I've also included a couple of Tubi mascaras and Tubi mascaras in general aren't really my favorite, but I do like how easy they are to remove. And in general, a lot of Tubi mascaras, you know, remain flake free throughout the day. So I really appreciate that. And there are definitely situations and times when I want to reach for a Tubi mascara. So I do have a couple of those here today and we'll talk about them as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a price ranking. I'm gonna take all 12 of the mascaras and I have created little application clips. And for each of these clips, I am putting on two coats. So I put on a coat of the mascara, show you what it looks like, the difference. Then I put on a second coat and I also put a coat on my lower lashes so you can see what they look like with application. So we're gonna go through a price comparison. We're gonna start with the most expensive and go to the best value mascara. And I'm going to kind of go over what the claims are from the companies for those particular products. So we'll talk about what they say these mascaras are supposed to do. Then we're going to go through a ranking of my particular preferences. And we're gonna go over my least favorite all the way to my most favorite. And that's when I'm going to be going over just my particular thoughts, why I put it there in the ranking and any experience that I might've had with it, such as smudging or flaking or anything like that. So any notes I have will go with my personal preferences. 
And then at the end, we have a few superlatives. So that way, if your preferences do not match mine for what you're looking for in a mascara, I can still kind of help guide you a little bit as to what I consider to be, for example, the most volumizing mascara or the mascara that stays put the best and so forth. So that way, depending on what you're looking for, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of a ranking for your particular category as well. So I hope this helps and we're gonna get started with the price ranking. Now coming in at number 12, the most expensive mascara is going to be the Surat Noir Lash Tint. This product retails for $50 and you get a total of 2.2 grams. That breaks down to $22.73 per gram. According to Surat, this mascara or lash tint rather, will give you precisely defined, denser looking lashes all day. It comes with a metal brush. And one thing to note, the metal brush does not really attract the formula inside so that you don't have product kind of gooped onto the brush. You don't have any brush fibers absorbing extra product either. So it stays kind of clean looking all the time. One thing also to note, and this is according to Surat, you are going to need an oil-based cleanser to remove this mascara at the end of the day. This Surat Noir Lash Tint is made in Japan. And coming in at number 11 on the list, we have a new product from Sisley. This is the Sisley So Stretch Mascara, and this retails for $72 for seven and a half grams. And this particular mascara then will break down to a total of $9.60 per gram. According to Sisley, it produces lengthened, separated lashes, and there's also an enhanced peptide in the formula. Anytime you see a peptide in any of the mascaras, that is a growth enhancing peptide, such as what you would get from a lash serum. So if you continue to use this on a daily basis for several weeks, you should notice some improvement and growth in your lashes. This mascara comes with a panoramic brush shape, which really helps to give separated defined lashes. This mascara was developed with ophthalmologists and dermatologists to make sure that it is safe for sensitive eyes and those who use contacts. This mascara is made in France. Coming in at number 10 on the list, we have the Sisley So Intense Mascara, and this retails for $72 for a total of 7.9 grams. That breaks down to $9.11 per gram. According to Sisley, this mascara gives you instant, visible, volumizing lashes. There is a vitamin-rich peptide, just like in the So Stretch Mascara, and in fact, all of the Sisley mascaras and it produces longer, thicker lashes with ultra pure double coated pigments for a very intense, rich color. There is a comb brush with this particular mascara and that is to allow for a perfect distribution. Now, this mascara again is also developed with ophthalmologists and dermatologists to make sure that it's safe for contacts and sensitive eyes. One thing to note about this mascara, if you have the full size, the Sisley S is divided between the cap and the actual container. And if you line it up when you are pulling it out, if you line up the S's, then you pull out your brush, it will perfectly remove any excess product so that you do not have anything kind of accumulated on the brush that would make it a little bit messier in application. At number nine on the list, we have the Chantecaille Faux Seals Longest Lash Mascara. This retails for $73 and you get a total of nine grams. That breaks down to $8.11 per gram. This mascara is made in Italy and just like the two previous Sicily mascaras, it also has a lash peptide inside. And if you continue to use this daily, they say after 14 days, you will see some growth. This peptide also enhances the appearance of natural lash length, thickness, and fullness. It produces immediate volume and conditioning for your lashes.
For number eight and number seven, we have a tie. So the Chanel Le Volume Revolution de Chanel is tied with the Victoria Beckham Future Lash Mascara for price. So we are going to start with the Chanel Revolution Mascara. The Chanel Le Volume Revolution de Chanel Mascara retails for $35 and you get a total of six grams. This breaks down to $5.83 per gram. This mascara is produced in Italy, and this is Chanel's first patented 3D printed brush. It has a honeycomb structure with micro reservoirs to make sure that you get the perfect amount of mascara on your lashes. This produces immediate and extreme volume and intense and long wearing formula. There is a unique wax-based formula which produces instant lash volume, density, and separation. The Victoria Beckham Future Lash Mascara retails for $28 for a total of 4.8 grams, which again breaks down to $5.83 per gram. This is a tubey mascara and it's presented in a heavyweight glass mascara tube and it is tested by dermatologists and ophthalmologists as well to make sure that it's safe for sensitive eyes and for contacts. This is also a volumizing tubing mascara. Number six on the list is the Chanel Le Volume de Chanel. And this retails for $32 for six grams, which breaks down to $5.33 per gram. This mascara produces instant volume and intense color for longer, thicker looking lashes. And this is a classic well-known product for Chanel. At number five, we have Dior's Iconic Over Curl Mascara. And here I am using a sample size of this product. It retails for $29.50 for approximately six grams, which breaks down to $4.91 per gram. This mascara is produced in France, and this, according to Dior, will produce a 24-hour curl. There is cotton nectar in the formula that produces protection, softness, and shine for your lashes. And this mascara in general will also promote longer looking lashes and wide open eyes. Number four is a new product from Burberry. This is the Ultimate Lift Mascara. This retails for $30 for eight grams, which breaks down to $3.75 per gram. This mascara is made in Italy. It combines volume, curl, and length for an instant lifting effect that lasts all day. It's buildable. 
and you can go from natural looking lashes to oversized lashes with additional coats. It's clump free definition and there are micro bristles on this brush. This has a special concave brush designed to catch, curl and lift each lash effortlessly. There's no fragrance, talc, parabens or D5. At number three, we have the Merit Clean Lash Lengthening Mascara. This retails for $26 for seven grams, which breaks down to $3.71 per gram. This is a tubing mascara, and it defines, separates, and lengthens lashes. It is EU compliant and also Leaping Bunny certified. Number two, we have Lancome Lash Edul Mascara, and I am using a sample size here today. This mascara retails for $26 for eight grams, which breaks down to $3.25 per gram. It is lash lifting, volumizing, lengthening, and it produces fanned out lashes with no clumps, and it lasts 24 hours. And coming in at number one, which is also our superlative for best value, we have the Jones Road Mascara, which retails for $26 for a whopping 14.7 grams. So that breaks down to $1.77 per gram. This mascara separates, lifts, and volumizes lashes in a clean formula. All right, so I hope that was helpful to kind of see how things break down by price. Now, one thing to note is just because we're looking at how much product you get per mascara, that doesn't necessarily always equate to the best value for a mascara. As I mentioned, the Surat Noir Lash Tint has that metal brush where nothing really accumulates or sticks to it. So I used my mascara or lash tint for almost daily use for months. And it definitely lasts, I, it has not run out yet. I'm still on my first tube. Now I have been recently using some other mascaras, but prior to that, I was using that pretty much exclusively. So just so you know, that is not gonna make a huge difference. Another thing that you wanna pay attention to is just because you have a lot of product doesn't mean it is going to last as long before it dries out. And also you wanna make sure that you are safe with your eyes. Mascara is recommended to be kept for three to six months. So I try to keep mine for approximately three months usually before 
tossing them. And that's really important to make sure that your eyes stay safe and you are not introducing extra bacteria or infections or anything. So definitely don't play around with your eye health. So you don't necessarily always want to go for the most amount of product. You want to make sure that you have a product that seems to be a good value for about a three month time period. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about my personal preferences for mascaras. And we're going to start off with the one that I like the least. And this is a little sample size of it, but it's the Le Volume Revolution de Chanel. And I have tried a few samples of this. The first time I tried it, the sample I got was really, it was kind of dry. And I was like, hmm, is that the mascara? Or is my sample just really dried out? So I got a couple more. This one is not dried out at all. You can see the honeycomb texture on the wand. It's a very interesting wand, but I don't find the wand itself to be very helpful. And you can see how much product accumulates just on the side here as you're pushing that in. That's something that really bothers me. This mascara is actually gonna go directly in the trash because I really do not like this one at all. I find it to be a little clumpy on the lashes and I didn't have any issues with flaking or anything, but I didn't have the easiest time to apply it and it just didn't do anything special to my lashes. I definitely found that I preferred other Chanel mascaras, which you know may have an actual similar formula. I preferred them over this one. This I just, I really did not like. And next number 11 for my preferences, and I'm sorry to put this here, but that is the Sisley So Intense Mascara. And I wonder if I have a full size, if I might like it better, if I were able to line up the S's and pull out the wand better. But for me, it's not the formula that's a problem. I am actually wearing it on my lashes today and I like the actual formula. I like what it does to my lashes. I have no issues with flaking or anything, but I just don't really care for this particular brush. So, you know, it's this like, kind of like a, a toothbrush shape. And yeah, it's just, for me, it's not something that's super easy to apply. So I like the actual formula of it, but I don't love the brush. So it's just, it's not really on my list to repurchase or rather get use another sample. And next for number 10 and nine, we have a tie and that's going to be a tie between the Dior Overcurl or Iconic Overcurl and the new Burberry Ultimate Lift. So let's talk about the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl first. This is a sample size and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I didn't have any issues with it. The curved brush is fine. You know, it's just for me, it's just an average mascara. It didn't really do anything special, but it works just fine. So I like it but I don't love it. There are ones that I favor. So that's why it's down so far on the, the list, but it's not a bad mascara. The Burberry Ultimate Lift Mascara, I have to say I'm very, I'm a little disappointed. Not very, but a little disappointed. It's an okay mascara, but I loved the Burberry Cat Lashes and I was hoping this would live up to it. And I haven't used cat lashes in quite a while now, but in my memory, it, it they don't compare. So um, I did actually have a little flaking with this one when I left it on past 11 hours. So that is something to know. I didn't find it to be, you know, as it didn't hold up as well as some other mascaras, but it does apply nicely. And, you know, I like the curved brush and you can see that it's, it's not like a natural bristle brush. It's like silicone or plastic. I think it's silicone but i like the brush i like the way it applies it looks nice but it's just average now i have to say that even though it is just average it's a decent price point so i wouldn't necessarily not pick it up again it's just not something that i'm going to actively go out and be like oh i gotta get that mascara again now one thing i'd like to note about the burberry it is new it just came out about a week ago and Sometimes when you use a new mascara after you've had it open for a week or two, you know, sometimes your opinions on that change. So I will have an update on that mascara in a future video, but currently at this time, this is where I'm placing it on the ranking. At 
number eight on the list, we have the Chantecaille Faux Seals Longest Lash Mascara. Now I know there are a ton of people who absolutely love this mascara. And again, there is nothing wrong with this mascara. I like the fact that it has the peptide in there for lash growth and you know, I don't have any issues with the brush or the formula in general. It performs just fine. The only thing is, you know, I just find it to be a little bit wetter than I would like. This is definitely one that for me, when I first get it or when I first open a tube, I rather let it sit for a couple of weeks and let it, you know, get a, a little bit drier than it was initially because it's just a little bit too wet upon opening. But, you know, it still remains wet. It's one that takes a little bit longer to dry on my lashes. Now, as I mentioned, my lashes, again, they're not super long, but they're on the longer side. So when I do put on this mascara, I frequently end up like blinking and hitting my head and then getting lash marks. So that's kind of where this, why this placed a little bit lower down on the, the list, because I do like the idea of having the lash peptide in there, which would normally boost it a little bit but I just don't really care for the wetness of this particular formula. Number eight, we have the Victoria Beckham Future Lash Mascara. Now I have to say, I kind of like having this heavy glass mascara tube. I have not dropped it, so if I did drop it and it broke, I would not be happy with the mess. I don't know if this is one of those glasses that is supposed to hold up better if you drop it. I'm not willing to test that right now, but uh, you know, that would, it would probably be the case because let's face it, people drop things all the time. So, you know, I like the glass too, but I don't know if it's the most practical. Now this one has a really nice skinny curved brush. And I really like this. It's very easy to put on, especially on the lower lashes. I think this brush is great for that. I love the shape and the size of it for getting in those tighter places. Now, one thing I wanted to know is this is a tubing mascara, but look how much product comes up on this brush. Now, if you watch Beauty Has Been, uh, Michelle and her daughter, they have a channel where they review products as well. They have a new channel, so be sure to go over and support them. But they did a review with this mascara recently and it got all over the place. It was just a huge mess. Now, I have not had that happen. However, there's always a ton of product that accumulates on the brush that I have to continue to scrape off. So for me, that's the biggest drawback to this. It looks nice on the lashes. It does provide definition. I don't really find it to be all that volumizing personally. Um, maybe the tiniest bit of volume, but I would not consider it a volumizing mascara. And to be honest, most tubing mascaras typically don't seem to be all that volumizing. And yeah, so overall, I like the mascara. It's very easy to remove with warm water. Uh, you know, it stays put throughout the day without any flaking or anything, but I just don't like how much product comes out at once. So that's why this one placed where it did. And number seven on the list is my other tubing mascara. And this is the Merit Mascara. And it's actually going to have a very similar effect on the lashes as the Victoria Beckham. They seem very similar in formula. They both produce defined separated lashes. You know, neither one of them give like a ton of volume or lengthening in my opinion. This brush is, you know, a nice basic brush. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I do prefer the shape of the Victoria Beckham brush, but you can see that there's not a ton of goopiness to this product. So it's a little bit easier to get clump free lashes with this mascara, just as easy to remove as the Victoria Beckham yet I don't get this like mess on the brush or the container. So I didn't scrape this off or anything. That's just how it comes. So that's why this one ranked a little bit higher than the Victoria Beckham. Now for number six, I'm putting the Jones Road Mascara. And I actually really like this mascara. I do have to say that um, now mine is uh, you know drying out. This tube is, is done with but I like this big fat wand when I want a lot of volume and this produces a ton of volume on your lashes and you can keep adding layers and get it to be super mega lashes. It looks great. I, I do really like it. However, it is a little clumpy. So, you know, 
that that's that that's my thing you know you see how you can get like product on the outer edge and so forth putting that in there's a lot of product that comes with that brush which makes sense you've got a large brush so that product is going to accumulate to it it's not really you know being scraped off per se on its way out of the tube so there's definitely a ton of extra product that comes with it which for me is not something that i love because again it's something that then i have to go in with my tweezer and eyelash comb and kind of separate my lashes but when i want volume this is a this is a great mascara next we have the la volume de chanel mascara and this is a classic item. I, you know, it's not my favorite mascara, but I love it and I always end up repurchasing it. So it's definitely one I like. One of the things I like about it is that Chanel does occasionally come out with other colors from the mascara, which is something nice. But for me, this is just like a nice staple product. It doesn't produce a ton of volume. It produces what I would consider to be a moderate amount of volume for your lashes. But again, the formula is something that I like because it's not going to be super wet, it's not dry, I don't have flaking. So it gives me pretty much everything I want in a mascara. It's a really nice, you know, mascara. It just, for me, it doesn't really produce anything extra. So La Volume de Chanel is number four on the list. And at number three, we have the Lancome Lash Idol Mascara. And this is only a sample size, but this is one I would definitely purchase a full size of. It does have a nice curved wand. You can see it's got like the silicone bristles. You don't get too much product out at once. And I think this is a great all around mascara. So this one does say that it lengthens and volumizing. It kind of does everything. And this is really a great jack of all trades. I don't think it's gonna give a ton of volume like the Jones Road, but it's going to give you can build this up to get a lot of volume. You definitely get some lengthening with this. And with this particular brush, you know, it does a decent job of separating your lashes. It's not necessarily going to be quite as separated as some others, but it's fairly separated. This is like a really great all around mascara. And I think it's a decent price too. So this is definitely one that I would purchase a full size of. And at number two on the list, we have the Sisley So Stretch Mascara. So again, this is Sisley's newest mascara and most of their actual formulas for their mascaras, they have some differences, but they're pretty minor differences. The base formula is still gonna be fairly similar. They all have the growth peptide and so forth. But I really like this particular brush. It really gives me defined separated lashes. It performs really well on me and I like this panoramic shape. It makes it skinny enough here that I can get into the small areas easily. It works well on the lower lashes and the upper lashes. And I just, I really love this. It lasts all day. I've had no issues with any flaking or anything. It comes in black, brown, and blue, you know, and yeah, I just, I really, really love this mascara. So I think this is a fantastic mascara. It's on the more expensive side, but again, it does have the lash peptide in there, which, you know, makes that a little bit more understandable. And my number one mascara, which is probably not a surprise, is the Surat Noir Lash Tint. And I have to say, it was really hard to figure out whether I preferred the new Sisley So Stretch or the Surat Noir Lash Tint. And there's one thing in particular that kind of pushed the Surat into the lead. And that is the fact that when you put this on, your lashes look vinyl or latex or something like that. You know, they're a shiny black and it just, it looks seamless. You don't have any clumping, but it, it also just looks like you have these super nice lashes. It doesn't look like you have mascara on per se. I really love the metal wand on here. For me, getting separation, this is fantastic. So I love this wand. I love the fact that there's, you know, not a ton of, you know, product that is attached to it that comes out. So application's easy. The size of this wand is great for lower lashes and getting like in. And I just think it's really easy to use, really easy to, you know, kind of, basically hold up all day. I've had no flaking or anything. And again, this tube is old now. I'm actually going to replace it 
after this, but you know, even though it's an older mascara, you would expect it to be a bit dried out, still no flaking for over 12 hours. I still have not, I've worn it and still haven't had any flaking or issues, no smudging or anything with this. The one drawback is you do need to use an oil-based remover for taking this off at night. That doesn't bother me because most cleansing balms have enough oils in there that will remove this on its own. And that's typically what I have been using to remove it. So if you do use something oil-based, it's super easy. There, there's no issue taking it off with that. There's no like tugging or pressure or anything. So I, yeah, I had to put this at number one. So just a few superlatives for the most volumizing mascara. I'm not sure if this is a surprise to anybody or not, but it's actually going to be the Jones Road Mascara. This one definitely gives my lashes the most volume of all. And I showed you two layers of it. You can keep going. These lashes will look huge. You know, if I'm doing, for example, a nailed it look and I'm trying to recreate something where they have false lashes on, I don't use false lashes and I really don't have the desire to do that. So this is the mascara that I go for when I'm trying to achieve that look of more voluminous, fuller lashes where I actually have more individual lashes. So I think this is a great value and it's also a very volumizing mascara. This is one that I would definitely purchase again. I really like this mascara. The best lengthening mascara for me is the Sisley So Stretch Mascara. My lashes definitely look super long with this mascara. And if I continue to add coats to this, I get even more length and I get a little bit of volume as well. So I definitely think this is going to be the best at lengthening my lashes. The best mascara at staying put all day. For me, it's actually the Surat Noir Lash Tint. Now, I thought about putting one of the 2B mascaras in this category, but there is a reason that I did not. And if you have not used a 2B mascara, let's say that you know you rub your eye or something, you can actually end up pulling off some of those little tubes. So it's not necessarily going to flake, but you might actually remove some of them. And as the day wears on, um, I did notice, you know, even with the Victoria Beckham in particular, uh, when I was testing that one out with this video clip, I, towards the end of the day, I rubbed my eye and I actually ended up getting some of the tubes off, but I did end up with a little flaking there. The Merit one, I didn't have that experience with, but again, I might not have really rubbed my eye so much that day. So I'm not really sure how that one would compare, but it is something to note that those tubing mascaras, they can technically be pulled off. Whereas with the Surat Noir Lash Tint, it really doesn't budge and I've really had nothing happen to it. And our last superlative, the best overall mascara or the Jill of all trades is going to be the Lancome Lash Edol Mascara. Now I have only used this sample. I've had the sample open for about a month, maybe four or five weeks. And it still hasn't dried out, which you know is good for a product of this size but this mascara really does it all. So you're going to get lengthening, you're gonna get volumizing, you get clump-free definition. It's easy to put on, it's easy to remove, and it doesn't take a super long time to dry or anything either. So it really is kind of the best of everything. It's just, you know, when you do have a product that is so completely well-rounded, it doesn't necessarily excel in one particular category. So that's, you know, kind of what made it number three and not number one on my list. But this is a fantastic mascara. So I would highly recommend this. And as a bonus, this is, I believe, Katie Jane Hughes, the makeup artist. I believe this is her favorite mascara. She's always talking about this one. And that concludes my mascara roundup. And I hope this was helpful. So hopefully the application clips and the price breakdown really helped you kind of decide what you might want to put your money towards in a mascara. And, you know, again, my personal preferences are going to differ from other people's. So hopefully you were able to take some of the information I provided today to figure out what would most suit your personal preferences. 
And thank you so much to all of you who have been waiting for and asking for this video. Again, Makeup Mondays is a series where I try to cater towards you and your requests. So if you have any additional requests or questions, swatch requests, things like that, that you would like to see in another episode of Makeup Mondays, please be sure to leave them down below in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I'm at Alexis John. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you very soon.